another is a guy named DJ Lagway, who is, uh, I believe, out of Texas. And then mm. the third is a kid named Julian Sayan out of Carlsbad, California. He's not a uh, St. John Bosco or Matter Day kid, but mm. he uh, plays kind of in the – he plays in open division ball in San Diego County. So What does that mean? Kind of, it basically means, like, they don't have classic – classifications out there it's called mm. the uh i think they call it the grape or the it's either the cactus league or the grapefruit league i don't know that's but, the minor uh, league baseball do they just jack the minor league baseball they did yeah okay yeah i think so um but like you know he is really really fun to watch he just yeah. obviously finished his sophomore season but he completed 72 percent of his passes as a sophomore in high school uh playing against you know big boy socal football uh, and he's not a matter day or bosco quarterback which basically means like he's not playing with a bunch of other four and five star kids like a roster with 30 kids that are going to be d1 prospects uh so that's the one that i think georgia is like maybe honed in on the most they have mm. number one on their board. He's supposed to commit sometime this, this season, but they got Jaden Davis on campus right now out of Charlotte. I think Kirby learned his lesson and he's not putting all his eggs in one basket again, but yeah, it will be very interesting to see as crazy as this is going to sound like life after Stetson Bennett is a little unstable looking at the Georgia quarterback room right now. I think Carson Beck has shown some good progress and can be your guy in 2023. But after that, I think all bets are off on just sort of who's going to develop and how. So you think it'd be, it's going to be Carson next year, not one of Brock or Gunner right now. I do. So you're and losing I mean, I, one of those two guys then in the next year. I think it's Brock. I think Brock you think leaves. you lose Brock. Mm -hmm, I do. Interesting. Yeah. I think he has. And, and I want to, before I say what I'm going to say, I want to be clear. A quarterback, a young quarterback's light can come on at any time. And mm. It could happen tomorrow or it could not. But like, you know, it seems like with these things, they they sort of just click on all of a sudden and they're better. But with Brock, I think you're looking at uh, a guy who just hasn't quite grasped that system that Mocken's trying to run yet. And, and it's been a couple years. And then – as gifted as he is athletically, because, you know, he does have a big arm and, and he has some some athletic ability in terms of running the ball. His release coming out was kind of this long, loopy motion where he sort of starts the ball at his hip and it, it hmm. does this full 360 thing. And they've worked with him to try to shorten that and it just hasn't worked out yet. Uh, hmm. Last fall, he basically had a case of the yips where like – he, you know, couldn't throw the ball for a little while because I think he was so in his head. And then you go watch the tape from the spring game, and when he's out under the lights, he's reverting back to that long, loopy motion, which just isn't really built for consistency or getting the ball out on time. And so it'll be interesting to see because, I, I mean, he has a lot of physical tools, but everything hasn't quite come together there yet. It's interesting. Well, as much as I would love to continue to talk about the the absolute mess, and people are saying the absolute mess that is the Georgia quarterback room. Uh, Folks are saying, yeah, a tradition unlike any other. Um, couldn't be my quarterback situation, uh, uh, Graham Coffee. Uh, well, we're going to talk about ceilings, and I want to get your perspective on this because I think this is something that I think a lot of college football fans, if they have this like nailed down, if you have your program ceiling nailed down, you will enjoy college football a lot more. You'll enjoy yeah. your Saturdays a lot more if you can nail down your ceilings. Like, especially now with realignment and where things are going with NIL and stuff, like if you really come to terms with ceilings, like that's it's a good place to be. Like you'll be happier. It's just if you want the NFL, it's right there on Sundays. I love the NFL, it but it's a different thing. Everyone can win a title in the NFL. Not everyone can win a title in college football. And it's not what it's about. It's about Saturdays. It's about October. It's about September. It's about November. So before I have, to, I felt like I needed to have that preface before uh, we dive into these ceilings because we're not trying to be mean, mean spirited, anything like that. I just think it's imperative that SEC teams, we're an SEC country, a lot of SEC folks tapping into this. Um, I want to kind of parse through where you where you're at with the 14 teams and whether or not 
uh, the ceiling is where it should be. So I was going to go reverse for this order. season. Yes, for no, not just for the season, for just where the program can be, like what we know okay. about the program now. I mean, you could throw in this whether or not too. it's reaching the potential what their ceiling they... is as a program based on their resources, based on their geographic location, their de- like the conference makeup where these teams are like that sort sure. of thing. Um, I think we have to start with one that I think will be a pretty easy one to decipher, which is the Vanderbilt Commodores. 